This is KP15 serial number 49. It is a registered post dealer sample machine gun. This is the one you saw in the recoil and in range footage from the torture test. The carbon fiber handguard did not survive the torture test. The front aluminum supporting piece cracked and came out, but I bent it back into shape and taped it up with some 100 mile per hour tape to make it serviceable. There are some exposed glass fibers, so I'm going to cover it with one of my SHTF wraps during the match. It is otherwise unchanged, aside from the fact I've added my Romeo 4T and Juliet 3 magnifier for the match. All right, I'm at the range and I'm zeroing the upper for the KP-15 that we ran over. I'm zeroing it with one of my lower SLT2 trigger, so it's easier to get a good group. I'm gonna put it back on the machine gun lower match this weekend. All right, getting it dialed in with the Romeo 4T and uh, Juliet 3 magnifier. Sometimes I like to shoot into a void between uh, two of the orange spots. Uh, it's a little bit easier to get a clean sight picture of the dot. Still dialing in, and then final group. I think that's about as good as I'm gonna get with a dot and uh, barrel that's had a thousand rounds of full auto put out through it. All right, I'm at the September 2020 Rio Black Rifle Match, and I'm using the KP-15 Post Sample Machine Gun that you saw in the recoil and in-range torture test. For this match, I've added my SIG Romeo 4T, the Julia 3 Power Magnifier, and I've added a rail back at the rear of the carbon fiber free float tube to attach a bipod. I had to go to the rear of it because all the rail up front got cracked when we ran it over. So I'm gonna shoot through all four stages and we'll see how it does on the clock. Maximum target distance on this stage is just at about 200 yards. The shooter begins engaging the further targets from over top of this bunker. I engage the leftmost targets first, transition out to the targets that are about 200 yards, then swing back over to the targets that are about 100 yards away. I now move to the bridge, swing the magnifier out of the way, and engage these six targets that are at about 50 yards. Reload on the move, swing the magnifier back into place, and re-engage the first six long-range targets from this position. Again, beginning in the left-hand corner, I get both of those targets easily. Uh, this position is less stable than shooting over top of the bunker, uh, but I am able to get them quickly, and then I finish off on the right-hand target arrays again. People keep asking us if you can mag pod on the KP-15, so here's a clip of Tim shooting in limited division where bipods aren't allowed resting on the magazine over top of this concrete bunker. As you can see, it works just fine. The target arrays on this stage are at 200 to 300 yards. The first engagement sequence on this stage is shooting left to right over top of the barrel. Because I have the bipod in place, I can't clamp down on the barrel like I normally would from this position. There's more bounce and I am less stable as a result. And this is the first time that I start noticing how much worse shooting the mil-spec trigger is than the match triggers I normally shoot. Uh, you can certainly make good hits with the mil-spec trigger, but it does require more conscious effort to accomplish the same result. The next series of targets is over top of the spool. Right to so I almost space out there and engage in the wrong sequence. From this position, the shooter has to shoot the targets right to left, engaging the furthest targets first. Like many things, bipod position is a trade-off. Running the bipod at the rear allows the shooter to pivot more easily target to target but it is correspondingly less stable than having it out at the end of the forend. From this position, the shooter is back to engaging the targets left to right. From this final position, looking through the optic, I see these targets to the left. I was supposed to be shooting at the ones to the right the targets on the left or for another stage. All right, so that last stage, total mental screw up on my part. 
No real problems with the rifle so far at the match, but on a stage like that, as simple as it is, I still should have walked through each position and seen where the targets were that I needed to engage from each position. There are two really similar target arrays right next to each other at uh, right about 200 yards. And when I got behind the optic in that limited field of view, I saw the, the left target array that was actually part of the previous stage. So big screw up there. Each one of those targets I didn't engage that was part of the stage is plus 30 seconds. So there goes my score, but I have to push that out of my mind and shoot the rest of the match as if I'm starting fresh on each stage. The cluster of three targets on this stage is at about 300 yards and the two full-size Ipsic steel are at about 400 yards. These first four steel targets are at about 70 yards. From this position, the shooter engages the three targets at 300 yards first, moving left to right, and then takes out the two targets at 400 yards. From this position, the shooter engages the two targets at 400 yards first and moves back across to engage the targets at 300 yards. I am shooting through a little bit of brush in this position, so sometimes I have to shoot multiple rounds through a spot to clear the way for the one that actually makes the hit. This stage starts with 10 paper targets at close range, which gives me an opportunity to shoot full auto. The shooter then has to move to the helicopter and engage three targets at 300 yards from two different positions. Two bursts on that one because it was a partial exposure. The scoring is two hits anywhere or one A zone to neutralize. I mag dump out on the last target. Let's see if I can make some hits at 300 with the barrel burning hot. You can't really see on video, but this helicopter prop is always unstable. The more you shoot, the more it bounces and shakes around. Again, it's from unstable positions like this that I feel the most handicapped not having a match trigger. I have to put much more conscious mental energy into pulling the trigger smoothly and calling the shot to make the hit. But every round I send down range, I'm observing the impact and adjusting fire accordingly. Well, that mental error on the second stage I shot cost me big. I ended up 8th out of 17 in stealth division and 17th out of 63 shooters overall. Nonetheless, the KP-15 post dealer sample machine gun held up just fine throughout this match, despite all the use and abuse it had previously sustained during the torture test. The bolt carrier groups holding up just fine, the JP silent capture spring systems holding up just fine, and the receiver itself is still going strong with no stress fractures or cracks anywhere in it. Um, shooting with a GI trigger uh, makes this match uh, significantly more difficult, and uh, that is one of the reasons why the WWSD 2020 includes the SLT-1 trigger. Using a four and a half pound trigger is much easier than using a seven to eight pound trigger.